Good evening, friends, and welcome to tonight's time of reflection here on Facebook. Part two of our series of reflections where we consider the question of what it means to be in relationship with Jesus. Last week, we reflected briefly on the wonder of the fact that we are invited into relationship with Jesus and, and the power of recognizing that Jesus is the one who takes the initiative in this relationship. And ours is a humble and grateful response to the gift, to the grace, to the invitation that we receive from Jesus. Now tonight, we're going to focus a little bit more narrowly on one of the dynamics that makes for a, a healthy and a vibrant relationship with Jesus. But before we get there, I'm going to need your help. I'm going to give you a minute or so to reflect on a question that I'm going to ask you. And I'd like you to write a single word in response in the comment section below this video. We'll give you, as I've said, about a minute or so. There'll be a piece of music playing in the background. If I ask you to reflect on who Jesus was, who Jesus is, what comes to mind? Imagine for a second that we, that we play a word association game. And I say, Jesus, what comes to mind? One word. I'd like you to take this opportunity as we listen to a beautiful piece of music recorded for us by William Earl, our music director here at St. Columbus, to take a moment, sit back, think carefully. If you hear the name Jesus, if you think about who he was, who he is, what word comes to mind? One word and go. Thank you to those of you who responded and participated in this little reflective exercise. The words that you wrote down will be used to, to draw on for next week's reflection as a picture emerges of, of who the person of Jesus is and, and how we understand who he is. And tonight, as I mentioned in the introduction, we're going to reflect for a bit on a dynamic that exists in a relationship with Jesus if our relationship with him is a healthy and a vibrant one and that is the fact that we take our cue from Jesus for our day-to-day -day living the way we think about things our attitudes towards certain people or, or ideas for the way in which we engage with community and society around us for our own private and personal disciplines, that in all these things we take our cue from Jesus, from who he was and how he did things. And I'd like to read to you tonight a beautiful passage that is very well known, the so-called golden rule in the Gospel of John. John chapter 13 and verses 34 and 35. A new commandment I give to you, 
that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. By this one thing, all people will know that we are Jesus' disciples. By this one thing, all people will know that we are in a living and vibrant relationship with Jesus. That we love one another. But not just that we love one another in the way that, that the world might expect us to. Not just that we love one another in the way that we might love our family members or our close friends. But that we love one another as Jesus loves us. In other words, that we take our cue from Jesus in our relationship with others, in the way that we love others, that we learn from Jesus what that means. And that might sound sentimentally lovely, but it's actually a particularly difficult thing to do. Imagine to love as Jesus loved, to love those who persecute us, to love those who betray and reject us, to love those who deny us, to love the most unlovable individuals. Because that's how Jesus loved. When we take our cue from Jesus in our relationship with others and in the way that we live, that dynamic makes for a, a vibrant and a living and a meaningful relationship with Jesus. Now, there are a number of ways for us to try and understand this, to try and give expression to it. And I remember a number of years ago, there was this very popular movement, especially in some Christian circles, and people even wore little wristbands to remind them of it. You'll recognize immediately when I mention it, WWJD, what would Jesus do? That may be helpful for some, but it's also potentially problematic. Because the reality is sometimes we just simply don't know what Jesus would do. Not in a mechanical sense, not in a step-by-step, -step, here's the recipe for living kind of sense. And in other cases, it's problematic because sometimes the way Jesus acted was quite unexpected, quite surprising. We read the Gospels and we find Jesus behaving in a way and doing things that we're, that we're shocked by. We think, really? Is, is this what Jesus would do? But when we talk about taking our cue from Jesus, we don't mean simply understanding it in that, that one-dimensional mechanical way of trying to figure out what Jesus would do in a certain situation. No. What we mean is learning from who Jesus was, how he lived, the way in which he engaged with others, tonight more particularly, the way in which he loved, and we strive to love in the same way. I have no doubt that as you wrote the comments this evening in response to the question that I asked, that many of you would have written the word love. When we think of Jesus, we think of love. More of that will emerge in our reflection next week. But tonight, as we find ourselves in the early stages of the series, week two, we have an opportunity to think critically about our own relationship with Jesus and whether or not in our day-to-day -day living from that relationship we take our cue in the manner that we engage with others. For friends, this is the invitation of the one who calls us into relationship with him, that we love one another as he loves us. To this end, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and remain with each one of us, now and forevermore. Amen.